Hey guys, my name is Dawn. I garden in North Texas, Zone 8A. Here's just a preview of some of the gorgeous blooms that are going on in my yard. Before we start, a little garden tour. Hey guys, welcome back to my garden. I have been missing in action. We have been on vacation for three weeks and it was quite a catch up to come back. Um, I've been trying to get rid of my jet lag and just catching up on all my garden chores. So the temperatures are so mild right now and it's so awesome just getting in the garden. Um, we're gonna just get a quick garden July tour in and I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, see you then. You can see my crepe myrtles are still in bloom. And I think after the bloom fades, I typically go in and deadhead and I do get a whole new flush of blooms. Um, so I think I'm about there with that. Uh, my canna lily, amazing. This foliage is just spectacular. It's about to put on another orange bloom. So um, I'm excited to see that, but the foliage is pretty much exquisite and one of the main reasons I grow it. This Dichondra Falls here is just taking over and I love it. It's starting to fill out into the pathway. Um, Skullcap is as strong as ever, putting on so many beautiful blooms. I do love the way the Skullcap makes such a pretty mound. It's a very beautiful softening to the pathway here. And my Mexican mint marigold is prepping for fall. This is gonna be the most beautiful fush of like an orange gold bloom, uh, like a dead grasshopper. Ooh, ew, ooh, ew. Okay, well, it's one of those big ones and he looks dead or something, but anyways. All right, and then over here, guys, you see this amazing coleus that has just spread out into the most beautiful ground cover. And I did a video about how easy it is to um, propagate coleus if you just clip it trim off the bottom leaves and stick it in another spot it will just spread for you and that's what's kind of happening up in here the beautiful beautiful mystic spires is undeniably the most beautiful blue color inspired by Janie of course who loves it and so I'm glad I tried it I had some Henry Dolberg over here and it was it, it spread like wildfire the Henry Dolberg was putting off seed I was constantly pulling it, so I actually pulled it up and planted it on the other side of my garden in my front yard where it can spread. I'm happy with that, but back here, this is my rose bed. I didn't really like all of the um, seeds going everywhere, and also the Henry Dilbert gets huge, so just make sure you have enough space for it. I'm hoping this Mystic Spire stays a little bit more in control with the size, and I went ahead and underplanted all of it with some white alyssum. By seed, I say I sowed them, but I just threw the seeds in there and they're gonna hopefully just line this bed with a beautiful white carpet. And let's go back to this side, blanket flower. Uh, I think I need to get in here and just deadhead because it's kind of looking a little spent. It's putting off a few blooms here and there. So I don't want to completely um, cut off those blooms. Um, my lesser cat mint is doing its thing when everything else is kind of expiring. Get another view of the mystic spire yet. So pretty. And then you can see the sexy Rexy roses, a few here and there. I had an issue with black spot. Uh, we got so much rain in the spring, so I wound up just I had defoliated them, defoliated them to the point that I was so annoyed. So I actually just cut them all back, um, which I wanted to do anyways, because I had a rose garden hedge here. And if you watch some of my videos, you know that um, this particular one went back to rootstock. So um, it wound up being red, which I have five roses here and I did not want a red rose in the center. So. I ordered another one from Heirloom and I'm just cutting them all back to kind of eventually meet up with the size of this one. But let's go take a look at the buds, how pretty. 
Oh, I love the color. All right. And here's my cut flower garden. Beautiful zinnias. I've got to actually get out here and harvest. Most of them are either a unicorn or alpinglow mix. Um, if they do come up in my yard, because you know they do reseed, I'll dig them up and put them in this bed. But the colors are gorgeous, so. Um, here is the Spun Sugar Celosia. Just soft shades of like pinks and peaches, making beautiful, beautiful bouquets. Let me see if I can get over here and show you some of the pinker ones. All right, you can see along my greenhouse, my Autumn Joy Sedum is putting out some beautiful stalks. I can't wait for those blooms. The um, rock and roll, I forget, rock and black. Sedum did not do good at all, y'all. Look at that. It basically melted, both of them. So I'm keeping them there. I'm hoping maybe the roots took, and we will see what happens with that. But it obviously could not take the heat. But again, we'll see what happens in the spring. Leaving leaving for three weeks was a difficult thing to do in the middle of the, all the heat uh, a lot of i did lose a lot of things um, i came home to a lot of sprinkler issues so i lost a few things but um, well i say lost they were struggling i was able to come in and save them but they're now not doing well at all um, let's go back here and just look at the Harvest. We've got tons and tons of We've got some. Let's see. Eggplant going back here. Where's our eggplant? And then we still have a few tomatoes, which is surprising. They're in there somewhere. But yeah, it's probably going to be the last of it because it's going to start getting pretty hot. And then over here with. Uh, my Peggy Martin mixed in is a passion flower vine. And then look at these Gulf Fertility caterpillars doing their thing. I'm so excited about this. Let's see if I can zoom. I saw the little butterflies flying around and I didn't realize that the caterpillars were having a happy harvest in my garden. So they are just eating that vine up. So excited. All right, come around and I have mint all up in here. I still have some petunias that are surviving. I would say survival is the word. Um, a few of them, I lost a lot of the ones in the landscape, but the ones in the pots are still doing really good. All right, well, let's back up and take a look at the planters with the hyacinth bean vine because it's doing what I want it to do. Just fill that fence and start making flowers. Isn't that gorgeous, y'all? Let me see if I can go find a flower over here. I did plant these little parsleys for host plants and I'm pretty sure I saw a caterpillar the other day, but I haven't been able to find it again. So I know they're in there, but look, some petunias are still going. I can't believe this. I give them another few weeks. All this stuff that can handle the heat euphorbia in there but let the sweet potato vine take over because i do know it does well in the heat all right let's get up there and find a pretty flower all right guys i'm climbing the fence for you look at this flower isn't that beautiful it reminds me of an orchid this is the reason i grow it
Hyacinth bean vine also makes the most beautiful pods once it starts heating up. And if you save those seeds, this is what you can plant every year. So every year it either self seeds or I save the seed and throw it back in. But also look at the creeping Jenny. Let's come around. I've got more zinnias here in some grow bags because you can just never have enough zinnia, right? And my cut flower garden is just way too small. That's another thing, right? You can never have enough space for a cut flower garden. So we're gonna be taking away a lot of this grass and adding more beds. Um, but if um, you watched one of my previous videos, you can see I planted this bed up. It is struggling, y'all, it's struggling so bad. So when we got home, um, I realized I had just put drip underneath that. And this is just not a good time to start new perennials on drip. So um, I cut a lot of them back. Some of them are doing better than others, but you know, this is what to expect. These are perennials. This is not an annual bed. So I'm being patient. I'm cutting them back. I'm letting the roots get established. Uh, but altogether, I think once it fills out, it's going to be amazing. Um, my, let's move this because my Wajulia is one of the things that did not get enough water but I cut it back and I've been watering it daily and look it came it's coming back so this is a winner in my book because y'all if, if it can survive without water for three weeks and come back like this then if it actually gets the consistent water that it needs it's going to do amazing so pretty excited about that um, but I did pick this up at the nursery, Twisted Pink Oleander, because when we were overseas, I was so inspired by the oleander all over Italy and Greece that when I saw this at the nursery, I thought I had to have it. So I'm going to find a spot for this. I'm going to put it in the pot for now and then save it. And in the fall, probably we're going to be making a new bed and find a beautiful spot for that. And then I was also thinking how pretty it would be right there. But I don't know if I can handle two trees. I have that and the Vitex. It's just too much, I think, for one bed. It would probably all wind up being in shade, and I don't want that. So speaking of Vitex, let's go see. There are some blooms up here. Let me see if I can catch. I don't think it'll show up in the... Catch a... Let me catch a bloom. All right, and then the container garden is coming along. Few of the things still flowering, the begonias mostly. The impatiens are pretty much on their way out. The Japanese maples are starting to fill out this area. I'll back up so you can see just beautiful. Still waiting to put the uh, trellis right there. Maybe put a clematis on there. That's the beautiful water fountain my kiddos got me for Mother's Day. Clematis taking its rest during these hot summer months to last until fall. And a Belinda's Dream is one in bloom here. And then the hyacinth bean is starting to fill out along the fence. Let's see. And then over here, we've got a blood good maple. Some beautiful, this is just greenery. Love this. And then this is all under this crepe myrtle, giving it some nice shade in the afternoon. And then let me take you around if we walk around here. Oh, and then here, yeah, I should show. Look at the, this is beautiful lemon thyme. It smells heavenly. Mm. The Autumn Joy seedlings are filling out, putting on some buds. And then let me come aside here so you can see the double jellyfish, actually triple jellyfish basket. And 
then the basil, again, guys, I just cannot get myself. The pollinators love it so much. I've just been trying to maybe just keep my pathway clear, but I can't get myself to pull it out. So uh, the heliotrope, one of the few things that is doing so great in this heat. Coming around, Rose of Sharon looking gorgeous. I'll come around here. This is one of the, I think maybe the third bubble gum that is doing okay right now. I did lose most of the ones in my front yard, but I put some cascading vincas in with it just in case I do lose them. And look, you can't even really tell one is vinca and one is supertunia bubblegum. And I think, it's, I think it's called Blew My Mind. It's so pretty. Let me see if I can get a shot of happy little pollinators at work. They're everywhere. Some more heliotrope. My bogey. Bogey? I got fussed before because I, I call it a bougainvillea and I guess it's a bougainvillea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say many things correctly. Some more heliotrope. And I am thrilled that my happy Diana clematis, you guys, it blooms. It was blooming in the 100 degree temperatures. So I think I might kind of spread this guy everywhere. This is the second year for this clematis. That's always exciting to me when I find one that can take the heat like this. And my flocks. My blackfoot daisy has spread into the pathway so pretty and look I'll show you the rest of them. I love how it takes over the pathway. All right so let's go back here. My white swan have seen their white swan cone flowers have seen better days but I do kind of love the way the dark heads look because I do the white flocks right there so it's kind of pretty. And then I'm just leaving the seeds for the birds. I'm also just, I've harvested a little bit as well. So I'm just gonna leave them. I'm not gonna worry about deadheading them or anything like that. Another favorite that, of mine that the pollinators love is this gorgeous, it's called lesser catmint. I don't know if you guys can see the bees all over it. Little bitty purple, purplish white flowers. Just gorgeous. And then back there, the Incredible. Seen better days. It has one beautiful bloom at the very top. And a gorgeous salvia. Back up. And my butterfly weed. One of them has gotten to its prime. The rest of them are still coming up from seed. I don't know what's taking so long this year. Again, I've got some cone flowers from seed. These are the purple. Rebecca. The hosta spread out. And then let's go up here and back up to the drift rose bed. Back up. The drift roses just 
still putting off blooms, y'all. Some beautiful white lantana in front. This is that fun, fun Coreopsis that I love in the summer. I'm a big fan of yellow in the garden and I just love Pops the Yellow. Got some little zinnias that are poking their head over the waterfall. And I've got up in here just lots of pastas. That gorgeous canna lily. Um, I've had some petite crepe myrtles here, and they are just now looking like they're starting to make buds. So, still not doing very much. And along here, loving, loving the heliotrope. This is Proven Winners Augusta Lavender. Let me see if I can get in front so you guys can see how pretty the purple. The same thing, pollinators all over it. And then I still look like my hopera is still doing well back there. Some of the hostas still look good. I have been trimming off some of the leaves that want to look a little bit crispy. And if there's something that I'm not naming, please just leave a comment, let me know, and I'm happy to get back with you. But um, in here, I had impatience, and they're all doing that awful thing that they do in the summer. So I had this coleus that's reseeding around my yard, so I dug it up and I tossed it in there. Looking back this way. Becchia, catnip, hostas, Santalina. Oh, my eclipse. Look at it, guys. Look. Still making pretty, beautiful buds. I'm sorry. I say buds, I mean blooms. But altogether, it is actually doing really well. There's Hardly many crispy leaves, so I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. Got a gorgeous hostas back there that need dividing, and I keep talking about it, not doing it. <laughs> and just so you can see the full view, I've got holly trees up here that are new. Um, if you're new to my channel, just so you know that this was all lost in an ice storm many years ago. So the last few years have been spent replacing our trees and all the underlying plants and perennials that were at that time all for shade. So, so much of it is now in sun. And so it was kind of like starting from scratch. So, and then if I come this way, I've got a gorgeous Japanese maple there. And then I've got a huge oak tree up here. It casts a lot of shade, but this bed does get some great morning sun. And around the oak tree, I've got alyssum bordering this bed here, white alyssum, and then um, all of this coleus here with some peach undertones. I have some baker seeds um, grew from seed. Coleus is just one of those things that's like a weed, basically. I could take this, cut it off, and plant it, and it would start a whole new plant. So all along here. Looking beautiful are these canna lilies.
all together. Things are looking good. We got some good rains the last couple of days, which is unusual. So this is the um, Rose Creek Abelia, or is it Rock Creek Abelia? I'm not sure which one. I think it's Rose Creek Abelias. Love them. Pollinators love them as well. Smoke tree, and then I don't know if you can see behind it. I've got some drift roses tucked away. Let's do a close up of the drift rose. Look how pretty. I think this is the peach. Here, and you can see my highest of bean vine all along my retaining wall there. All right, let's back up and get a view of this hyacinth bean wall from a different angle. Very cool looking. I'm obviously very obsessed with this hyacinth bean vine. I absolutely love it. But otherwise, the mist flowers are not putting on any buds yet. I don't know what's going on with this. They're looking nice and full, but no flowers. All right, guys, look at the purple pentas down here. They're doing amazing, just gorgeous. And then I would love your opinion on the Texas sage here because I'm debating about trimming them up into trees and I would like some underplanting. So I'm just kind of seeing, um, I hate to trim them because once you trim them, you kind of lose the pretty little purple flowers that they make, but I have to trim them anyways because they're, I don't want them taking over. This sidewalk is too important here. So I um, would love your input to see if I should just keep trimming them upwards or if I should just turn them into trees. So let me know what you think in the comments.